<laughs> okay, uh, right, now something more technical, but I'll try and make it less techy for the number of uh, managers and entrepreneurs that are in the audience. Uh, my name is Paul Dix, and I'm the co-founder of a startup called LibLinks, and it's based in the incubator facility here, so if you're interested in finding more about that, uh, ask me later, and I can even show it to you if you want to see it. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a technology called Docker, which we've used at LibLinks to um, really kind of bootstrap our, our application stack, um, and that'll give you a, a good idea of why it's good for startups. So what is... There we go. Ditch that. What is Docker? Docker is an attempt to do something like this. In 1956, the standard shipping container was invented, and it revolutionized shipping, because everything was just based on those standard boxes. They could be put on ships and trains and cranes and trucks. Um, and everything was the same. Docker is an attempt to do the same with software services. So the idea of a, of a container in Docker is that it's a software service that could be combined with lots of other ones. So you might put Apache into a container, you might put a database into a container, you might put something like Memcache or Redis or MongoDB into containers, and then you can compose them all together into your application and run them anywhere. So you might be thinking, that sounds like a virtual machine. And if you're a manager or entrepreneur, that's exactly what they are. You can think of them as virtual machines. They're just pieces of software that you can run on a physical host. You can run lots of them, and that's great. But the really interesting thing is what they do for developers. So if you're a developer, the important thing is that they are not virtual machines. Forget what I just said. They are kind of very isolated processes that are running on a Linux server. So that's, if you're just getting started with Docker, you, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But once you're past that and you realize what, it, what they actually are, you realize how efficient they can be. They start instantly, or as, as much faster than a virtual machine anyway. Um, and you can run a lot of them on a single host. So if you're a developer, you can run quite a lot on your development laptop. So why is this good? So if you're involved in software development, this is where I, I'm talking more to the developers in the room, you're probably familiar with some of these tools if you're doing any kind of Linux development. And each has a place on this kind of spectrum of deployment. Some of these you might use on your development machine. So you test something, something like XAMPP, which runs Apache for you on your laptop. Vagrant, which actually fire up virtual machines. But when you deploy, you're using things like Puppet and Amazon and so on. But what Docker lets you do is hopefully give you something that's a bit of a holy grail. So it gives you the ability to run those containers everywhere. Your developers build containers that contain your application, and they can deploy them both on their own laptops to build a simulation of a really complex system, but those same containers, the actual binary in that container, is the thing that's tested and, and deployed which is brilliant, um, which is, <coughs> I'm probably, I, I'm, when I timed this, it was six minutes, so I'm trying to rattle through it really quick. <laughs> so the, um, the, the one really good thing about Docker is that it puts some restrictions on you, because each container is really a single process, and uh, the way it communicates with other containers is quite tightly controlled. And that puts, um, really forces you into this thing called the 12-factor app which is a methodology for building scalable software services that are easy to deploy, easy to test, and most importantly, easy to scale. Things like um, if you're building, uh, say, a, a web application that needs to talk to a database, it has to discover where its database is. You don't hard code it into the application. That's just one example. But the, the more you get into using Docker, the more you, you, you find yourself building something that is scalable. So, final slide, because I really accelerate you through this. The, the main thing, the reason why it's good for startups, just to summarize, are that you can distribute your developers. And it's very easy for them to build a simulation of a complex application. So we can have a contractor fire up our application stack in a few minutes, work on their particular piece of it, commit it, build a container, and then we can deploy that very, very quickly with no downtime. You, build, you have one stack of containers, you build up another stack, and you switch live over to that second stack of containers. And that's why it's so good. So that was probably about four minutes. Uh, if you, does anyone have any questions? We've probably got time for a question. That makes, that makes um, 
backing out chains is relatively straightforward as well. You just go back to the old containers. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, what's called a blue green yeah. deployment. So you could you always keep two. Yeah. Keep the old one ready to, to roll back to. And it's very efficient. So there we go.